Thursday is Vol Classic meeting. Let's get straight into the action and see what we're going to do here in the opening event on the card. I'm going to go straight into Daryl Marie. I think Darren Burrows has found something for us in the first race as well. In fact, he's found in the first couple, he's recommending that there are a few horses we might want to consider having a straight up bet on. Mr. Marie, your, your first choice in this opener? It has to be the Tony Pizza Train Sunshine Day Clark. Okay. <laughs> it's for obvious reasons. Um, she ran second behind On the Horizon. On the Horizon came out and beat a very competitive field over the weekend. Yes. Her form line's been franked. Um, have I banked her in the opening leg of the bar? But I haven't. Hmm. <coughs> why me, why not? Why My only go? concern, okay, is you know in the work riders, things can go wrong. Yes. Uh, on paper, I do believe she's very close to a penalty kick. Yeah. She doesn't take on anything that comes close. Oh, so you're close, concerned. Okay, I've got you. That comes close to her standard of form. Right. Or form lines. Yes. Uh, she really does st stick out like a sore thumb over here. Yes. My only concern is if they cut throats early on, uh, who knows how she's going to handle that. I don't know if Penicilla can give her a chance yeah. because there are a few in here that like to get on with it in the early stages. So I am in her camp. I am in her camp in a big way. I expect her to win. Uh, she finished well clear of the third place runner. So I expect her to get a try in her second start for Tony. I just bang, backed her up with number six, Arctic Commander. Um, I thought she was in need of a comeback start when she ran disappointingly. Last time out of a thousand, I like the fact that you were staying on smartly. Um, I don't think she's got as strong uh, a form as the favourites, but I'm hoping she can run second for us to double up. Okay. Well... You know, Sunshine Day did run to um, On the Horizon. You've heard it's come out and won. You've seen it's come out and won again. It's priced up to win this race at 7 to 10 is um, Sunshine Day. But Daryl does raise concern that sometimes things can go wrong. So, all right, so let's see how, what happens. It's, it's the way he feels about it. That's fine. He's got his bar pot by five and six. First leg, five and six. By three and four. By six and seven. By one, two, four. By one, three, seven, eight. By six, eight, nine, ten. So, you know, at worst, he'll be hoping to double up. Uh, otherwise, obviously, he'll be hoping to run the favourite out. That's a 384 Rand by pot. And Darren Burrows uh, is quite keen. He's quite keen on a few. Uh, this one in particular, Sunshine Day. Uh, sorry, I didn't recognize the first race. Equus Champion Stay of Future Pearl. Well done to her. And the second race is the Equus Champion Broodmare. These, these are the TBA Awards. Demanding Lady. A maiden. This is a maiden class field over 1,200 meters. Just, Daryl, uh, just in terms of the betting for the second, we get some sort of idea. Number three, Policy of Truth tops the boards. It's price, priced up at five to two. But, but Darren Burrows does, he goes for this. He makes this hard to beat. Well done to him. Yes. Future Pearl. <laughs> Who to him? Oh, to him. Sorry, yeah. did I say her? Yeah. Okay, big um, one. He is good future pearl, but yeah. policy of truth, you're in agreement with... Um, I'd be in like, agreement with Darren in a race like this, I think. Yeah, you know that if he was drawn uh, from one to six, I think um, it'd be very, very hard to beat and certainly a clear-cut uh, first pick because he does hold Viva Spirits, who's drawn wider than him. So mm. I expect him to confirm that form. But have a look, Clyde. Where's he drawn out at? Ten. Yeah. He's drawn 10. Currently, yeah. are there any scratchings? Um, not that I'm, not no, that I'm no aware scratching. of. So no. he's drawn 10 around the bend. <coughs> he's got bend experience, Clyde. Mm. Last time out, excuse me, he raced on the inside track. So I don't think that's of any concern. He just needs luck from that wideish draw. That's mm. all he needs is luck. And then he'll win. He'll go very close, yes. You know, okay. I think, I think that's not... Uh, no, I, buttons I know, I know. But the form line at least has worked out well with <laughs> yes. New Mexico winning and what's the other one, Caretaker? Yes. That's, now, that's interesting that you touch on that because he's got the beating of Caretaker, yes. right? And Caretaker beat the Tyson the Brave, who right. I think is his biggest danger. Oh, okay. But in that race with Caretaker, Tyson the Brave was desperately unlucky, Clyde. He got taken up numerous times in the straight. Yeah, that form line's dead, eh? Dead. Totally dead. But he should have won. No, no, he I'm talking about that. Yes, I understand the caretaker run, but coming from the caretaker form now is not, is worry. I mean, yeah. nothing has come and run a play. They haven't run a place yet. That worries me about that. Okay, don't like. worry too much about that. Okay.
Um, we're going to get through this leg, Clyde. We've won numbers three and four. All right, three and four both, and Darren Burrows on the three. We've got a place accumulator. Yes, yeah, let's put the PA up. Thanks, Ricky. Here's the PA, three and four, but it's uh, boat races. Look at them. Three and four, six and seven, one and four, one and eight, six and ten, one and eight, one and six. It's 128 Rand PA perm. The PAs have been in good form, so make a note of that. And just a reminder what Darren Burrows likes. He says, guys, let's get onto the source. Policy of truth. On to the third race. Who are we naming this one after? Let me have a look at uh, what they have called. The Equus Champion Stallion. Give me the green light. This is a maiden class over 1,800 metres. First leg of, of our pick six. And top of the boards is House of Romanov. Priced up at even money for the Tony Peter Stable and Craig Zaki. Are we bankering that? Clyde, you just saw it. Every leg I put in two horses. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I should have realized, um, yeah. So you in your bi and that's bipod. Yeah. Eh? Oh, no. You know what? Was you know what? If you listen to Tony's interview on Track Talk prior to his debut for the yard last time, uh, he says he's a rig and he's gonna need gelding in time. Uh, okay. Just put some doubt in my mind. Um, All right. Lovely debut for the new yard. Yeah, got collared late. He was. No, I thought he was nearly won it. Like, eh? Mm. He sh if he stayed on the rail or if he happened to have kept straight, mm. I thought he would have um, just so, about won that. Tell me, so well, the Aziz beat him again. That's a good point because the Aziz have got a line yes. with Scarlet Pimpernel and Mondial. Yeah, that's right. Um, I think Mondial could potentially be a better horse. Uh, Scarlet Pimpernel, I like the fact that he stayed on nicely in his later starts. Mm. Concerns over him, Clyde, pulled up lame. But Jets is back 21 days later. Who's the blame last time? Yeah. No, oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Is that a worry in your well, in no, the back of your mind? Of course. It's a concern. But they wouldn't, Michael and Adam wouldn't run it if there's a problem. So. Yeah, exactly. So, House of Romanov pulled well clear of the third place runner last time out. Um, he's going the extra now. He's going 1800. Scarlet Pimpernel pulled well clear of the third place runner last time out. Mm -hmm. Ran behind a very nice sort in purple pitcher. They race highly. Um, yeah, I just played the safe route, Clyde. Six and seven. Definite preference for the six house of Romanov. I think he could go one better today for the New York. Okay. Well, we have a pick six worked out. Who I think maybe Darren worked it out, did he? Yes, he did. Okay. Well, let's see what his pick six looks like. Oh, it looks like. Uh, is it just a straight up selection? Cool. And uh, I guess that is what it is. House of Romanov as the horse to beat. He's obviously also bankering this in his pick six. Equus Champion Breeders, Drakenstein Stud. This is a handicap. Phillies and mares over 2,000 metres. From a market perspective, top of the boards here is number four, Burmese Tiara. The stable that's been having their winners, Bar and Burtis, is five to two. And three, Pretty and Pearls, is second favourite at four to one. Two last year. It was good to see St. John Gray back at the races last week. And uh, in good spirits, he's priced up at nine to two his last year. And number one, Kind Judy, is the other one that must have a chance. It's five to one. In fact, uh, when we heard Baron Bortis' interview around post-race interview with, with Burmese at one, he said he'd set the pace for, yeah. for um, what's this horse called? Kind it's Judy. The, for Kind Judy. And so I would <laughs> imagine, <laughs> maybe on this track, yeah. that Kind Judy will be the fancied one, of the, the right this one. This shows you, Clyde. Um, and yeah, we are as tipsters, just reading it off the book. Uh, yeah, we can't even get it right. So correct. Uh, people on the ground also not get easy. it wrong. At not times. easy, but that's why we do it every day. Yes, we take up the challenge. Yeah, Clyde. So Burmese Tiara. Now, I think she was fortunate last time out in that it was a small field. She came out slow once again, but she was able to navigate herself to the front. In her penultimate start, it was a bigger field, and she came out slow, and she was swamped, and uh, her race was done and dusted. Um, I hope she gets a clean break because I actually think the penalty she picked up for winning last time out is on the lenient side. Mm. You know, she won convincingly. She won easier than I think the margin suggests, two and a quarter lengths, and she only picked up a kilo and a half penalty. So I think of a rating of 63, she's got the chance to go back to back. She's very fit. Just hope she gets out in front. Uh, 
uh, without having to do too much. Can't Judy, you heard from the stable last night, she was actually expected to beat Burmese Tiara. Yeah, yeah. Uh, possibly ran below par. She was exposed. She never had any cover. I can see her reversing that form. Uh, I'm sure Byron can see it himself. So a healthy respect for Khan Judy. And then last year, you know, two comeback starts since I've uh, been rested have been uh, fair to date. Uh, close up on both occasions. Drops in class. Uh, having a peak run, she gets backed up quite soon. And SK gets on for Sinjin now. So um, I think numbers one, two, and four should be able to get us through. Okay. And it can be tricky. It's a handicap. It's at the 75. Phillies and mares. I don't think it's as easy. Well, I, yeah, I think it's tricky. So here we go, selections. In terms of what Daryl Marie is going or doing, is going one, two, and four. Then in the second leg, one, three, seven, and eight. Third leg, six, eight, nine, and ten. Fourth leg, all of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And that jackpot, if you take it at 100%, will cost 384 Rand. The Equus Outstanding Stallion is Trippy. Trippy middle stakes over 1,600 metres. That's where we're on to now. Let's take a look at the market. Remember, this is a couple of days ago, so just bear in mind things will change. And when we were doing the show, number eight, Silent War, top of the boards at five to two. Number one, Crimson Princess, second favourite, four to one. And number three, Perfect Witness is priced up at four to one. Going over the 1,600, remember you're on the classic, so you go around the turn, it's not up the straight. Bear that in mind. And uh, Mr. Marie, I know you're being, you know, you, you sort of insinuated from the jump, really. It's a boat race or most most races from a PA yeah. perspective. Who, which were the two that you went for, yeah? In the PA, I went numbers one and eight. Clive. One and I'm eight. Gonna, okay. um, the top, okay. Yeah, I went the top two. I mean, I think we'll, I think we'll get through. I, I, I don't think the race stops here, though, Clyde. Right. There are two others with winning claims, and they have to be number three, perfect witness, strictly because she's best weighted. You know, this is a, a middle stakes event and she comes up on top. And she's in good uh, form, eh? Workman like latest victory. Um, that form line stood up extremely well, Clyde. Hmm. Have you seen those winners from there? No, which one? That's you must name them for us. Which ones? From Perfect Witnesses last start. Yeah, I think about how many Destiny were there? Destiny of Souls, Imperial Master. Yes. Zuzan. Okay, All right. one from there. And she's best weighted, yeah. so you have to have health respect for her. No, she's in good form. She's got to be respected. No um, question about that. The mare in the race, Crimson Princess, yes. or the other mare in the race, Crimson yep. Princess, also well weighted over here. Mm -hmm. She's second best um, weighted. I liked her day before in New York, Clyde. It was mm. over 1450. She stayed on starkly. Uh, she gave a lot of weight away in her open handicap last time out. Um, I like her chances. She's very good on her day. So she's gone in. Okay. Then we have to touch on uh, Silent War. Ultra, ultra impressive last time I thought. You know, Craig Zaki actually did extremely well. He got into a perfect position from the worst barrier uh, stall gate. Um, wasn't, he wasn't stopping over the 1450. He mm. now goes over a mile. He's never won over a mile in the past. But from what we saw, Clyde, he wasn't stopping. So He's I don't think that's going to be of any concern. Am He's right? progressive. He's progressive. He's out at the weights, but the way he won last night, the handicap was impressed uh, because uh, he picked up that maximum penalty of four kilograms. We were impressed. So he's got a chance of scoring the hat-trick. One other I have to touch on is Spin Doctor. This horse loves the classic track. I don't think he stayed last night. Comes back in trip. Um... He'll be doing his best work late. Don't be surprised to see him flash up, Clyde. So all of one, three, seven, and eight. Preference for the one and the eight. And any liking for Brave Viking? I mean, I know uh, he comes off a rest, but... Yeah, Joe's horse is on firing since they've come back. I think he's only at two or three. The one, Kisei Azul. Okay. Ran, yeah, this, is a, this is a decent horse. He's a but very nice he, horse. He might just need it. I'll think? tell you something. If he wins on Thursday, Clyde, okay, returning from the rest... Yeah. This was, uh, is well, well above average. I'm not saying he isn't. Okay. But I'll be shocked to see him Well, if win. he stays 2,000, he could end up in the Betway Summer Cup. You never know, man. Eh? Listen, uh, Clyde, this is, 
he's meant to be uh, your 50th birthday present. I'm sure you've got a small share in him. Yeah, okay, well, we'll see all about all that. Let's take a look at the selections in for race number five now and have a look at jackpots. We're going one, three, seven, eight by six, eight, nine, and ten by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and the last leg, one and six. That jackpot from Daryl's perspective, 256 Rand. Sixth race on the card, uh, I can tell you for those who are watching race number six, Waiter to Win did not give an opinion on seven and eight. They found both races to be quite tough. You've got their PA and all that sort of stuff. Obviously, it's uh, it's quite hard. But uh, in that regard, you know, you now know what to do. This race is the Equus Groom of the Year. His name is Wandile Julius Sakile. It's a handicap and it's run over a distance, of course, of 1,600 meters. Let me give you an idea from a market perspective. Early market, though, so it's subject to change. Nine, Napoleon tops the boards at seven to two. Number four, Rain or Shine is nine to two. And number one, Bloomington is there at five to one. Okay, Mr. Marie. Hi, oh, do you know why there's no reason to give selections for races seven and eight? Tell me. Because I've got a winner in race six oh. at a big price oh. for the viewers. So I don't want How good to, is that? I don't Let's... want them to give the money back yes. in races I don't have a strong well, opinion over. There's a valid reason. Number uh, 10, Ryan's Dream. What price is he, Clyde? My, is that the Azzy horse? Yes. Ryan's Dream currently Tuesday, 12 to 1. 12 to 1. There you go. Good price. Did you expect more? No. I'm oh. over the moon with that. Oh, okay. Clyde, have a look at his rating. Yeah, take Down us to through 73, it. So you right? why you like it. Down to 73. Down okay. to 73. Yep. That's a very, very competitive mile. Tick the box, tick the box. Come back in trip to a mile. I love the fact that he's coming back to, uh, to okay. a mile. Okay. So come back um, in trip. I think that's another positive. Tick the box, yes. Another positive is mm. Muzi Yen in the irons. First time. He's no. riding yes, first time. very, very well. Okay. And the last positive I can give you, Clyde. Uh, wait, maybe two more. Yeah. He cracks a decent draw okay. and he's very fit. Sure. What else do you want? No, well, you've ticked what the box. What else do you want? I the think only, the last time Musi wrote for... The only five for... boxes to tick when you study the form. So you've ticked all of them. <laughs> I, I think there's one more. Uh, the last uh, horse that Musi rode for the Aziz might have been Karapi, who I tipped as well. Okay. Um, so I'm going to say Ryan's dream, the each way play in the race. Uh, I do respect the likes of Napoleon. I'm not co too concerned about his draw because he, he needs to get that cover. We saw that... For, Form line being franked. Yeah. Purple pitcher, I don't know. Brandon came up with the story that this is a triple crown horse or something to that effect. Uh, Purple so pitcher. All I can yeah. tell you is that he's highly regarded by the yard and he quickened up extremely well when winning last time out. Okay. Let's see how Scarlet Pimpernel goes early on in the day. And then Mo the Man. He's your stable, uh, as he is. There's a bit of an omen. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> and then Mo the Man is in good form. Um, well drawn can expect an honest uh, run but ryan's dream at 12 to 1 okay well that's all we need let's get let's get that's our money. very kind of you thank you very much there we go ladies and gentlemen that's how we wrap up betway's waiter to win and he's got uh, daryl marie's got a recommendation as to how to make some money out of ryan's dream let's put that up it's to box these horses all of six eight nine and ten take your chances with it and obviously obviously in each way on the 10 ryan's dream in fact daryl has recommended that maybe you nibble away at the 12 to 1. thanks everyone hope it's been good